Hoffit, everybody. Sabrina Salas Matsunani. Uh, I am with uh, the Governor's Communications Director, Adelaide Communications Director, Crystal Paco San Augustine. If you haven't heard yet, beginning tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, uh, Public Health will be uh, working with the Guam Police Department to begin uh, issuing fines and penalties for those who are caught violating uh, the governor's executive orders and public health guidance and directives. And uh, Crystal, if you could uh, just, just break this down for us because I know that the last time we spoke with you on the link uh, Monday, you were talking about how uh, the, the, that you guys were working on the formal process for the implementation um, of this in terms of when uh, or if anyone wants to challenge uh, these citations. But let's just start with um, the actual uh, offenses and the fines and, and penalties that could be assessed. Okay, Brie. Yes, so effective uh, Thanksgiving, I almost said Christmas, effective Thanksgiving day, that's November 26th, Public Health in coordination with the Guam Police Department will be enforcing that public health guidance memoranda and directives. The first offense for people caught violating you know, our social distancing mandates for gathering in excess of five people or more, not wearing masks and the like, uh, the first offense for individuals is $100. For that second offense, <clears throat> individuals uh, will be fined $250. And for that third offense and all offenses following after that, it's $1,000. And so for businesses, it's a little different, a little higher stakes. We're talking about first offense for businesses and nonprofit organizations. That first offense will be a $1,000 fine. The second offense, a $2,500 fine. And the third offense and additional offenses thereafter is 10 k It's $10,000. And so we really encourage the, the community, the public to really do their part to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. And we hope that uh, with these uh, this directives, these memoranda and that the enforcement of fines will encourage that. And especially as we look forward to Christmas and the holidays approaching, we really wanna continue with the progress we've made with that downward uh, downward trend of positive cases, the downward trend of hospitalizations. And so this is this couldn't be better timed. Again, effective Thursday, November 26, public health will be working with the Guam Police Department to implement, to enforce the public health guidance memoranda and directives. Again, reminder, just first offense for individuals, $100 fine, second offense, $250, third offense, $1,000 for businesses. It's for businesses, it's $1,000 for that first fine, for the second, for the second offense, $2,500 and for that third offense, $10,000. So to give you a little history of how we came here, of how we came to today is that, you know, last uh, last week, public health actually adopted this, uh, adopted the draft regulations and this followed public hearings on, on the draft enforcement regulations. We had those public hearings, we had two public hearings and we had received very valuable input from the community. And one of the biggest changes I understand came with the misdemeanor charge. That was what was actually removed from the draft enforcement regulations. And, and that actually came from public input provided at the, at the public hearing. So we did take that into account. Again, this is very important as we proceed with our COVID response and in keeping these numbers low, especially as we strive for five, you know, getting that CAR score, that COVID area risk score five and below and maintaining it. And back to the traffic court, you actually asked about that as well. Uh, so right. the reason, how we got from last week's adoption of the enforcement regulations to today, why did it take so long? I know that question did come up. Well, we wanted to make sure that we had a, a venue for, for those who wanted to challenge the citations issued to them. And so we actually copied or we modeled, modeled this, this, uh, this, we modeled this after getting a traffic uh, traffic violation or a ticket, a speeding ticket, for example. And so if you were to get cited in the next days, in the next few days after the enforcement of these regulations, you could challenge your citation. You could, um, the, same, the same way you would for a speeding ticket, you would go to traffic court and you would either uh, challenge it or you pay the fine. Mm -hmm. And the, what, the, go ahead. I was going to ask, what about uh, people who who want to report if they, they, they see somebody having a you know a party, a Thanksgiving party, let's say for example, uh, tomorrow, and there's more than five people, there's like 20 people gathering, um, wh who do they call? 
most definitely, we do want the community to be engaged, to stay alert, to be vigilant in our response to COVID-19. And there's always been an avenue to report uh, violations of our, our public health guidance and guidelines. And so that place for you to call, if you want, if you see someone out there violating our, our guidance, our public health guidance, you can call 311. So 311, you can listen to the directory depending on what time of day it is, but there is an avenue that says, you know, if you want to report a violation of the social isolation directives, press four. So I believe from eight to five, it's it's option four. After five, it might be a, a number two or number three. So I have to follow up on that, but just basically call 311. If you see something that's not right, if you, you most of us already, all of us should know what public health guidance is right now. So if you see someone violating that, you can call 311. Uh, that will hook you up to the dispatch and to the, the, the rack stationed at Homeland Security. They've been there, they've been receiving complaints. I actually spoke with dispatch this morning to, to brief them that, hey, they might get an influx of calls in the next few days because we did, we, we are asking them to be the recipients of the complaints. Uh, they'll um, send out, after you get a, after they receive the, the call, basically saying, okay, I see a gathering of more than five, they'll go out and uh, a team will assess the situation and a, a fine could be very likely. Mm -hmm. well, will they be open though on, on Thanksgiving? Yes, Guam Police okay, well. Department is ready, is ready to start enforcement. And I wanted to note that Guam Police Department will be taking the lead these first few days as the Department of Public Health and Social Services still trains up its staff to do citations. So the Guam Police Department, we're very grateful for them. They're, they're very uh, versed, they're, they're well versed in how to issue citations and the laws that come with it and, and how to do so. So Guam Police Department, I took talked to Chief of Police um, Stephen Ignacio this morning, his staff, they're ready. Uh, tomorrow we will be in full force and we will be ready to issue citations if necessary. But again, we, we don't want to, we don't want to. It's just to ensure that we, we stay the course as we continue our COVID response. Do you ever see them at least giving people, uh, you know, a warning first, you know, or uh, GPD is just going to go out there and say, oh, ticket, $1,000? Well, I know that the Guam Police Department is already given a lot of warnings. You know, I think in, I think I heard Chief of Police say upwards of 4,500 incidents of which they had to counsel people for violating yeah. public health guidance and, and guidelines. And so I do understand that it operates similar to a traffic ticket. And, you know, Guam Police Department does have the discretion to, to give, issue a warning first. But, you know, we do, we do know that this, this has been going on for a very long time. The public should be very aware of the guidance. You know, wear your mask, social distancing, gatherings of no more than five people. And so we highly encourage that. And we know what works in our COVID response and it's the four W's. It's wear your mask, wash your hands, watch your distance and have the willpower to do it most especially as we continue to battle COVID fatigue. Mm -hmm. I know when we spoke with you and Janella on Monday, it didn't seem like uh, we were going to be ready to roll this out by Thanksgiving, that uh, this process is gonna take at least another week. Was Has that always been the goal that we needed to get this implemented uh, before Thanksgiving, uh, taking into consideration the fact that we all know that people are, are going to gather uh, for Thanksgiving. So it, has that been something that you guys have been uh, wanting to do? And, and you know, here we are today. Right, so Governor Lilian Guerra has been, you know, very adamant that we wanted these enforcement guidance to be enforceable as soon as possible. But we wanted to make sure that we did it properly, that we did it with, uh, the public hearings so that we could hear public comments and we can get you know the the public's feeling on what we should do what we shouldn't do and, and we did take that into consideration so we after that was adopted again the process was finding a place a venue a vehicle where individuals or businesses could challenge those citations and so what happened last week is the judiciary had to step in make the make some make some amendments uh, adopt some amendments so that the traffic court could be that venue. And so that's what happened in the past week. And so I understand on Tuesday, they, they made that formal adoption, allowing for the traffic court to be that venue for the challenging of these citations. And so that's what took so long, why we weren't able to say too much on Monday, but now we're coming out today and saying effective Thursday, November 26th, we will be enforcing 
citations for those who are in violation of our, of our public health guidance. All right. Um, well, thank you so much, Crystal. Any final comments uh, before we let you go? We just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. But again, we ask you to celebrate on a smaller scale, you know, celebrate within your households. It's so important. If you are going to celebrate with other people, please keep that group at a, no more than five individuals. You know, wear your mask as much as possible. We cannot stress that enough. People are so vulnerable when they're eating and they're dining together. You know, coronavirus, it thrives on our culture. And I know that our culturally, we love to be together, but I think the best way to show your loved ones that you love them this holiday season is to, to be apart. And so maybe next year, we're really crossing our fingers again for that vaccine, for the us to achieve that car score of five and below and, and for a better 2020 or 2021 as we move forward. And hopefully we'll have, we'll reclaim our holidays and, and 2021 from coronavirus. Right, and I think we're, we're at what? Is it eight, eight or point nine. nine. Today's eight car point score is 8.9. We'll get the update later this week. And, we, we really want to applaud the community for doing their part. And it's, it's those that small minority who don't listen, who are having the parties, who are gathering that are really, really hindering our progress. But again, with these fines, we really hope to stay the course and get that car score below five. Right, and I think for anybody that is uh, watching, uh, just so it's clear, although the car score is at 8.9, uh, just as quickly as it can, uh, go down, it can go back up uh, if we don't practice um, all of the, the safety guidelines. So thanks, yes. Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Take care.